So how does mu vary with temperature and pressure? Well, we can figure this out using a Maxwell relation. So we've got dg is minus s dt plus bdp plus mu dn. And then we can uh, do Maxwell relations here. So we could say, I'm going to do a Maxwell relation of mu and pressure here. So I'll take that derivative and I'll take the derivative of volume with respect to number of moles. Okay, so if I write that Maxwell relation, I've got the change in the chemical potential with pressure, which is one of the things we're looking for. How does mu vary with pressure? Is going to be equal to the change in the volume with the number of moles. Now we have to remember what's being kept constant we actually have to keep both the other variables constant. So if I'm taking derivative with respect to n, I'm going to hold the pressure and the temperature constant. And if I'm taking derivative with respect to pressure, I have to keep the number of moles and temperature constant. OK, so there's a Maxwell relation. Great. Well, what does this say? This says the slope, how rapidly the chemical potential varies the pressure, is equal to this derivative. Well, if we have a single substance, which is what we're talking about, the this is units of volume, this is number of moles, this is meters squared per mole. Oh, this is just the molar volume. So we can say, if we're talking about a single substance here, this is the molar volume. Okay. So the molar volume is how rapidly this changes. So if I increase, increase the pressure on something, how rapidly its chemical potential changes is a function of its molar volume. Okay. Now, since the, the chemical potential is just the molar Gibbs function, this shouldn't be a surprise, right? The, the molar volume told us how rapidly our Gibbs function changed. So, of course, it's going to tell us how rapidly our chemical potential uh, changes. We can write a similar uh, Maxwell relation to see that the rate of change of the chemical potential with temperature is going at a constant uh, pressure and, and number of moles that's going to be equal to the molar entropy. Okay. Now this tells us something about uh, what a graph of chemical potential versus, versus pressure and temperature gonna look like, is going to look like. Right? If, we, if we graph chemical potential versus pressure, we know molar volume for a single substance that that's a, a positive number. So the slope has to be positive. So we have to draw a line like that. I'm not trying to say that it's going to be linear. This is just schematic. I'm just saying it goes up. And if we graph the chemical potential versus the uh, pressure, oops, I did pressure already, versus the temperature, we can see that in this case, the reverse is true. If we have a single substance, it has a, a positive molar volume. But we're multiplying that times this negative sign. So that means this must have a slope down. And this actually can help us explain phase diagrams. Let's go on to the next page. So we've got solid, liquid, and gas. So this implies that if we're at this pressure and we go across here in this direction, we should have solid, and then it should melt, and then, the, and then the, it should boil. Well, that actually makes sense if we look at a chemical potential graph. Because we can say that we start off, here's our chemical potential, and here is, uh, here is temperature. And remember, we said that the, the rate of change of chemical potential with temperature is equal to the negative of the molar entropy. Okay, so we know we're going to have negative lines. Well, we're going to start off with our solid at low temperature, and as we increase the temperature, the chemical potential goes down. So we'll even label this as, as just the, uh, the solid line, the mu of the solid. Okay, well, what about liquid? Well, which has a higher molar entropy, liquid or solid? Oh, it has a, liquid has a higher molar entropy, right? Okay, let's go ahead and write that, that the molar entropy of the liquid is greater than the molar entropy of the solid. Well, that must mean 
that this slope is going to be more negative. So we get a line that looks like this. So that's mu liquid. Well, what about gas? Well, we know gases have an even higher molar entropy. So we must have a, a line that's even more negative. So that's mu gas. And this tells us that, remember since the chemical potential is the Moore-Gibbs function, this tells us that if we heat up a solid, our Moore-Gibbs function goes along. Well, at this point, we can either go along as a solid, but if we go down to being a, uh, this isn't, the label's hard to see, I'll move it over here. If we go down to being a liquid, we can decrease our Moore-Gibbs function. We want to decrease our Moore-Gibbs function, so we'll come down here. At this point, instead of going on as a liquid, we'll move on to the gas line. So we can see that if we, if we draw some dotted lines down here, that this must be our melting temperature, and this must be our boiling temperature. Okay, So systems are always, or substances, are always trying to lower their chemical potential because if they can lower their chemical potential, they lower the Gibbs function. And so you can think of chemical potential as sort of molecular unhappiness. So a molecule is always trying to decrease its amount of molecular unhappiness. It's always trying to decrease its chemical potential. And so this is one way of, of, of explaining phase transitions. Let's go ahead and, and expand on that a little bit more. We'll go ahead, we'll do a phase diagram again. So we've got liquid, we've got gas, we've got solid. And this time we're going to increase the pressure. Okay, that's supposed to be a vertical line. And if we do that, we see we go gas, liquid, solid. Well, why is that? Well, we can do the same sort of analysis that we did before. We have chemical potential, we have pressure, and this time we remember that chemical potential changes with pressure. In proportion to the molar volume. Okay, so we have positive slopes this time. And we might remember that if we look at more volumes and this say this is carbon dioxide. The molar volume of solid is in general less than the molar volume of liquid. And that's less than the molar volume of gas actually usually a lot less. Okay, so that says something about the slopes. It says that if we start at low pressure with the gas, we should have a really big slope. But then when you go to solid, we should have a slope that's still positive, but less positive because the molar entropy, or the, sorry, the molar volume of a, of a liquid is a lot less than a gas. And then solids usually have a more volume that's a, a little bit less than liquids. And so once again, we can see that at low pressures, we have gas, then we switch over to liquid, and then we switch over to solid. So our, our chemical potential is destined to go up as we increase the pressure, but we can increase it more slowly by hopping over to these other lines. And that's what's happening when we reach here. We're going from liquid to gas and liquid to solid. Okay, so we can actually explain this uh, uses to explain how gas is sublime. Let's do one more thing. We'll see how gas is sublime. So we'll draw a typical diagram and we've got pressure and temperature and we know that, let's go ahead and annotate these really quickly. Okay, we know that it, if we're at higher pressures, we should melt. If we're at lower pressures, we should sublime. Okay, now why is that? Well, let's look at the high pressure case first. Okay, so if we're at, you know, if we're at, you know, 30 atmospheres, carbon dioxide will actually melt instead of subliming. So what does that look like? We already drew that, so I'll just sketch it out really quickly. Chemical potential versus temperature. And we've got, uh, first we've got the solid, then we've got the liquid, and then we've got the gas. So that first one was solid, this curve is liquid, and oops, I've mislabeled that, haven't I? That's the gas curve, and this is liquid. Okay, so solid, liquid, and then gas, great. Now, if we go to low pressure, we haven't really changed the more entropies at all, 
but we have changed the molar volumes. Okay, so which of these, or we've changed the pressure, so which of these is going to have its chemical potential curve change the most? Remember, chemical potential changes when we go from, from high pressure to low, all the chemical potentials are going to go are going to go down, but which one is going to go down the most? Well, the one with the highest molar volume, right? And that's gas. Gas has by far a higher molar volume. So all of these curves are going to go down. The solid one's going to go down a little bit. The liquid one is going to go down a little bit. But the gas one, it's going to go down a lot. Okay. So the gas, remember, is this curve. It's going to go down a lot. So if we shift all these curves, I'll shift the solid down a little bit and the liquid down a little bit. So those are lower than they were before. But the gas curve is going to go down a lot. So imagine we just take this curve and just move it all the way down here. We can imagine the gas curve going like this because I've just shifted it down. But well, now, look what happens. I went from solid to liquid to gas. But look what, what happens when we raise the temperature. We go along the solid line. We hit here and we go straight to gas. We sublime. So this would represent this situation here and this other pressure represent that system here. So we can actually explain why phase diagrams look the way they do, why things sublime at low enough pressures by using, by using these mu t and mu p diagrams.